Hello Mila, hello Jack. Hello everybody else is watching and welcome to Storytime with Grandad. Today's book is from The Lighthouse Keeper and it is The Lighthouse Keeper's Catastrophe. Mr Grinling was a lighthouse keeper. He lived with Mrs Grinling in a little white cottage on the cliffs. Every morning he rode out to his lighthouse to clean and polish the light. Every morning Mrs Grinling prepared a delicious lunch for him. At lunchtime Mrs Grinling packed the lunch in a basket and sent it down the wire to the lighthouse. On high days and holidays, when the sun shone, Mr and Mrs Grinling opened up the lighthouse, hung the key safely on its hook inside and spent many contented hours fishing. Hamish the cat lazed about in the sun. From time to time he roused himself to chase the seagulls. This particular morning chasing seagulls was not what Hamish had in mind. He was much too busy enjoying himself in other ways. Mr Grinling was not at all pleased when he saw what Hamish was doing. Move it, pussycat, he snarled as he chased Hamish into the lighthouse. That'll teach you to steal our fish, you little varmint. And without thinking, he slammed the door shut. Mr and Mrs Grinling continued with their fishing. Soon, Mr Grinling's stomach reminded him that lunch would be very welcome. As he went to let Hamish out, he was struck by a terrible thought. The key... Where was the lighthouse door key? Of course, it was inside. Mr Grinling did his very best to get Hamish out of the lighthouse. He rattled the lock as hard as he could. He pushed, he kicked and he cursed, but the door stayed firmly shut. Don't worry, soothed Mrs Grinling. Hamish is quite safe where he is. We have the spare key in the old teapot on the mantelpiece in the kitchen. The spare key was exactly where Mrs Grinling had said it would be, in the teapot. While she prepared cold chicken sandwiches, a fruit salad with lots of strawberries and a chocolate milkshake for his lunch, Mr Grinling listened to the midday weather forecast. It was perfectly dreadful. Wind and rain with possible thunder and lightning later in the day. I don't like the sound of that weather, Mrs G, said Mr Grinling. The sooner I get back to the lighthouse, rescue Hamish and switch on the light, the happier I shall be. If you could pack the lunch in the basket, I'll take it with me. Remind me to take a screwdriver, Mrs G. I have some repair work to do. So Mr Grinling set off down the steep winding path with his lunch and the key in the lunch basket. It was not until he was halfway down the hill that he heard Mrs Grindling calling from the little white cottage. The screwdriver, Mr G, you've forgotten the screwdriver. Botheration, he muttered. Climbing cliff paths for a plump lighthouse keeper was rather hard work. He put the lunch basket on the bank and stomped back towards the house. Oh, what a silly man. He really ought to have known better. Already the seagulls were beginning to gather. As he turned the corner, down they swooped. Such greedy creatures. They squabbled and flapped and squawked and tugged, trying to get to the lunch. Finally the basket started to move. Down the slope it went, tumbling, bumping faster and faster, over and over and over, until it came to the cliff edge. For a moment it almost seemed to stop, and then it was gone. And so was the key. Down it drifted, down past the eagle ray and the angel fish to the seabed. There it lay amongst the rocks and the seaweed where only the octopus, the crab and other sea creatures would ever find it again. Mr Grinling was very puzzled on his return. It was not until Mrs Grinling came down to help him search that she found the bits of cold chicken and the odd strawberry. But no lighthouse key. 
Not on the slope? Not anywhere. Oh, you are a foolish man, Mr. G, she exclaimed. All your life you've lived amongst seagulls, and still you leave your lunch for them to eat. Mr. Grinding smiled rather foolishly. I'm sure we have a third key somewhere, Mrs. Grinling shook her head. I don't think so, she said. Don't you remember? One dropped through the hole in your trousers last year. Already the sky was beginning to fill with clouds. Well, there's nothing for it, Mr. G, said Mrs. Grinling. You'll just have to climb in. So they collected the ladder and rode back to the lighthouse. While Mrs. Grinling held the ladder, Mr. Grinling climbed very slowly to the top. I don't like this, Mrs. G, he called. You know I get dizzy when I climb up high. Don't look down, she replied. Think of Hamish. Think of the light. Think of all those poor ships that might be wrecked unless the light shines tonight. But in the end, it was not dizziness that stopped Mr. Grinling. Oh, deary me, no. It was all those scrumptious lunches he had eaten. In through the window he climbed, and there he stuck fast. Neither backwards nor forwards could he go. He was just too fat. Now, could Mrs. Grinling help him? She pushed and she pulled and pulled and pushed until he squealed but she couldn't get him to move. I'm sorry, Mr. G, she said. There's only one thing to be done. I'll have to remove those great heavy trousers. Off came the boots and off came the trousers. Mr. Grinling wriggled again and at last he was free. Rowing home was difficult for Mr. and Mrs. Grinling. The wind was almost gale force by now and the waves kept breaking over the bow of the little boat. There must be another key somewhere, said Mr Grinling. We'll just have to search until we find it. And search they did. They opened old tins and jars, they emptied out drawers, and they peered into cupboards. But to no avail, no key labelled lighthouse could be found. I'll just have to cycle into the village and alert the Coast Guard, said Mr Grinling. No time, said Mrs Grinling. Look at that sky. You'll never get there before dark and you haven't got a light on your bike. But I've got an idea, a perfectly brilliant idea. While Mr Grinling looked on, Mrs Grinling rushed about the little white cottage, gathering up all manner of things. She put everything she had collected into a large sack. She weighed the sack, and then she weighed Mr Grinling. Mr Grinling began to feel nervous, but he wasn't quite sure why. By the time Mrs Grinling had attached the sack to the pulley and sent it down the wire, Mr Grinling was biting his fingernails and muttering to himself. Mrs Grinling smiled happily. That worked perfectly, she said. Your turn now. Mr Grinling's legs became quite wobbly and he had to sit down quickly in the chair. Me, he squeaked, on that wire, all the way to the lighthouse. You know I am terrified of thunder and lightning. Mrs Grinling, how could you suggest such an idea on a night like this? Mrs Grinling spoke to him in a stern voice. You must be very brave, Mr Grinling. Think of your poor little Hamish, all alone in the dark. Think of all the ships that might be lost because your light isn't shining. Mr Grinling shuddered. Of course, you're quite right, Mrs Grinling. I must be brave. I am the lighthouse keeper, and come rain or shine, I must tend that light. Without further ado, Mr Grinling climbed into his wet weather gear, fastened the harness around himself, and attached it to the pulley. A quick glance back at his comfortable armchair, a big kiss of luck for Mrs Grinling, and out he swung into the dark, wet night.
Mrs. Grinling watched until Mr. Grinling became a tiny speck in the darkness. The minutes ticked by and nothing happened. Mrs. Grinling became quite agitated. Why was it taking so long? Had something happened to Mr. Grinling? At last, she was able to uncross her fingers and smile again. Her plan had worked. Mr. Grinling and Hamish were safe, for it was there for all the ships to see, the light shining steadily and bravely across the ocean. The end. Goodbye, Mila. Goodbye, Jack. I'll see you soon. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.